All right, so the fourth and final step of the solar project development process is the physical act of connecting to the electrical grid. And that is referred to as interconnection the interconnection process. Uh, personally, I think this is the coolest topic out of all the others because there's a lot of information here that the average Joe doesn't know. This video will probably be a little bit longer than the other ones, but I promise it's worth it because there's a lot of cool information in there. So with that being said, let me give you some background information. Uh, there are two different types of power lines. There are uh, transmission power lines and there are distribution power lines. The only thing that differentiates these two power lines is that transmission power lines uh, transfer electricity at 69 kilovolts or above. That That's the voltage they transfer electricity at. And distribution lines transfer electricity at below 69 kilovolts. So as you might have guessed, I have some distribution power lines behind me right here. And these are the power lines that bring the electricity to your home. But even then the electricity, the voltage is still too high. Uh, so there's something called a transformer on these power lines. Uh, you can, I don't have any of them here. There's usually a cylindrical box and that's where the transformer is housed. And that brings the voltage down to 120 or 240, the voltage that comes out of your outlets in your house. Since this transformer is decreasing the voltage, we call that a step down transformer. And sometimes there's uh, a need to increase the voltage. So we call that, we call those types of transformers step up transformers. And those are needed when you're transferring electricity uh, very long distances. So you wanna have as little energy loss as possible. So sometimes you would use a step up transformer. All right, quick little scenery change. Uh, but these behind me are transmission power lines and they are absolutely enormous. Uh, here is another one right here. That bush right there is way taller than me. So just to give you an idea, uh, if you've never been up close and personal with these, it kind of gives you a renewed respect that these are all over America. All right, and then the last thing to note that's important is a substation. And unfortunately, I won't be able to show you one of those. But if you've ever been driving in your car and you look to the right or the left and you see a fenced in area with a whole bunch of electrical equipment, that was most likely a substation that you saw. I like to think of these substations as kind of the brain of the electrical grid because these substations connect power lines together, they house transformers, they contain safety equipment and um, circuit breakers, everything like that. And then on top of that, the utilities can use these substations to turn off parts of the grid while they're working on them or repairing on them, like during a hurricane, so that way the workers don't get zapped, you know, as they're working on these. Now here's something I find pretty interesting that most people probably don't know or at the very least they don't think about it. These power lines only have so much energy capacity that they can handle. So if you want to build a solar farm or any type of power plant for that matter next to a city but the power lines are at their full capacity, there's nothing really you could do besides building new power lines or refurbishing existing ones. The issue here is that building these power lines is extremely expensive and sometimes they, you know, you have to have them go over different states and so it could be a real hassle constructing these things and it might uh, make the project not even worth it to pursue. Now believe it or not, power lines at or near their full capacity happens more than you might think, more than I thought anyway. And so much so that one report has found 22 high voltage transmission projects that are pretty much completely or almost completely sited and permitted and kind of just ready to go. These new lines were built, it would create 60,000 megawatts or 60 gigawatts of new renewable energy capacity. Currently in Biden's infrastructure bill, there is a tax credit for building transmission lines. Now this would be absolutely huge for developers. I'm walking closer to this power line and here is this bush I was talking about and you could see it's just these things are crazy. Anyway, back to solar farms and the interconnection process. In order to get connected to the grid, you will have to get in contact with the utility and sign something that's called an interconnection agreement. Ultimately, each utility establishes their own procedures and tariffs with their own interconnection agreements. Now, there are a few things that will affect how long and complicated this interconnection process is, but the biggest one is going to be the megawatt capacity of the solar farm that you're building. For example, community solar farms are usually only one to two megawatts in size, so a lot smaller. And 
they're usually the energy is usually consumed close to where it's being generated anyway. So the interconnection process could only take something like three months maybe. However, for more massive farms like 200 megawatts, this whole interconnection process could take over a year. That's a crazy long time. Why does it take that long? Here's why. There are three different studies that the utility company will have to conduct. The first is called a feasibility study. This is a top level overview of the ability to interconnect to the grid and include single line diagrams of electrical, electrical components and power flow and takes about a month. The second is a system impact study. This is a little bit more in depth, more costly and takes more time to complete. As its name implies, this study will look at how a short circuit or a heavy summer or winter load will affect the project and this can take up to six months to complete. The third is called a facilities study and is the longest and most costly one and it basically looks at if it is if the project has been engineered correctly and if it will meet all of the different safety criteria and this one can take over a year but once again just to reiterate uh all of this, all of the costs and the timelines will vary greatly depending on the project size, what utility you're working with, what state you're in, all that kind of stuff. But yeah, uh, that's pretty much it. That is an overview of the interconnection process. So um, if you've watched all my videos so far, I, I greatly appreciate it. Um, and yeah, as always, if, you, if, if there's any questions or comments, just leave them below and uh, we, uh, we can talk about it.